the jingle music. <laughs> oh, it's I say jingle. It's like a twangy little like. Um, so it's fun. It's very fun. Wait, wait, okay, here we go. Yet? Cut. Okay. <laughs> no, what was that? A, a I'll have to play. <laughs> but <laughs> as my left hand's like. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna put this in the interview because that has to go now. Yeah. yeah okay. Let's. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start. I promise I'm going to start this time. Hey, country music fans out there. This is Lee with Coda Country. And today I'm joined by Nashville recording artist who considers himself to be rock and roll with a country soul. This is Mr. Derek Randall. How are you today, Derek? What's up, man? <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, better now that I saw a little air guitar going on uh, right, when, <laughs> right when we came <laughs> on. But, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Thanks for having me. Listen, oh my gosh, I'm so glad because I, Derek and I are recent friends for the for the listeners out there who who don't know much about Derek Randall. Um, we met through social media, TikTok. Now we're friends on Instagram, and I just missed Derek by like a whole hour at CMA Fest, and I'm so mad at myself. Um, Derek, before we get into your entire, what seems like a busy month for you, tell the listeners out there a little bit more about how we can find you online and how we can get more in touch with you through social media. Sure. We try to make it real easy. Uh, everything is uh, at Derek Randall Music on any of the socials, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all that. And TikTok's normally just uh, videos of us having fun or maybe a little clip of a, a music video or something like that. And then Instagram is like the, obviously like just the pictures from tour and Facebook's where we keep all the information. So you got to follow all of them because they're all a little bit different. That's right. And if you don't follow all of them, you're going to miss out. So there we go, guys. Make sure you're following exactly. at Derek Randall yeah. Music. Yeah, exactly. All right. So like I was saying, I just missed you. Um, and it's so funny because you played at Assembly Food Hall. I can't remember North or South Stage. But either way, I was yeah. staying like right at the hotel next door. And so I could have easily popped over and said, hey, and watched your set. And I'm mad that I didn't. Um, but it looks like you had a really fun CMA Fest experience. It looks like your past month. I don't know. It's just been wild. So tell me about CMA Fest. We'll start there and see where this goes. Yeah, CMA Fest was a lot of fun. I did get to play at Assembly Food Hall with uh, Nash News. My buddy Chris Moreno had me out, so that was pretty cool. And uh, being on the rock side of things, I don't always get invited to the to those. Usually they're like, hey, man, because we'll let's say I have a little bit of a potty mouth when we're playing. We're turning up and, and playing our live set. So they're like, <laughs> hey, man, you got to keep it family friendly here. I'm like, all right, I can do that. So um, it was really, really <laughs> awesome that uh, I got to come out there and um, my buddy uh, Chris Rudiger stopped by from uh, 615 House. I got to talk to him a little bit. And then uh, after the after that set, which was pretty, pretty awesome, pretty amazing, uh, I got to uh, got to walk around and um, hang out with some people from from a couple labels got to go up did you see any shows on skydeck so it's so funny you say that because i was like scrolling through your instagram doing my research as i do and i realized that we were at the same show when luke grimes played so i missed you there too go figure um but yeah oh, i was in the pit that? for luke grimes and that was that was cool it was very cool for skydeck oh i took a picture did you find yourself uh, no. Okay. So <laughs> I was looking, I was like, okay, if I'm very close to like wherever he just took this picture, but no, I couldn't find myself. I don't know. Um, but it was fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Nice. <laughs> now tell me a little bit more. You were just talking about how you're more on the rock side of things. In my research, I saw how you explained that, that Garth Brooks was one of the, uh, the inspiring artists on your intro to country music. Um, Tell me, how does your sound, I guess, fall into the, the country genre? How do you categorize yourself like that? What are your other influences? I think uh, one of the biggest influences is just being a hillbilly out of Missouri, man. It's just what we do. Just life is <laughs> one of the biggest influences, you know, growing up on that side of the fence. And, <laughs> uh, I think just the stories that we tell and some of our slow, I think our, our slower songs sometimes fit into it a little better. We got a, a song called Light Tonight Up that's about partying and stuff like that. It's got a little banjo in it. It's a little more rocking, but 
I think when we really open up and, and we start playing, uh, it, it has a little bit more of that hearty vibe where, where you just open up and rock out. It's not really going to be a radio country song, but Hey man, when we, when we write songs, we try to let them stay true to themselves. So it's like, um, I don't want to go out and say, I want every single song to be, you know, pure country. I just want them to be what they're going to be because we do have that. We, we do have two sides. Uh, my sister was just telling me I'm a Gemini, which I didn't know what that meant. But uh, <laughs> she said that as it like, is uh, something about like duality and like how you have two sides of yourself. And I guess for me, that's uh, just a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. But um, we got we got uh, we're, we're country music with a rock and roll attitude, you know. Oh, definitely. Um, and you were just talking about light, light the night up. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's one of the songs that we can find on your debut album that yeah. was released back in 2023, how we get down. Um, tell me more about maybe the writing process on some of the songs on that album. Yeah. Yeah. I think the writing process is a little different. So I'm not super great at guitar. I say I can cowboy chord it, which means I can, I know the chords, I know progressions and I do enough to, uh, put a melody over the top and I'm really thankful. I got a really, really good band that can uh, make it a little bit better, <laughs> make it a lot of bit better. But, uh, and what, what ends up happening is that's, that's when we get the the rock and roll vibes when they take that and we, we drop it down. We, we start everything with a half step down, which is, is a little bit more rock and roll. But mm -hmm. uh, I think every song's a little bit different. Sometimes I write a song and it's about something specific or sometimes I write a song and it, it takes a while. You have a piece of something, uh, just a guitar riff or maybe a melody and you kind of work on it and get with the guys and, uh, the song monster on there. I wrote that in about 15 minutes. I was pretty hammed up on some whiskey one night and <laughs> it just kind of fell out of me. And I wish, I wish they all were like that, man. It was it, where they, you know, it, it just comes easy like that. But I think, every song on there means something special. And the, the last, the last little interview I was doing, they were like, which one is your favorite? I'm like, I like all of them. <laughs> it's like, so for some, some artists in, in Nashville, they're, they're singing other people's songs, but these are all my songs. So they're, it's, it's basically the story of my life. If you, if you listen close and uh, it's hard to say that, you know, I don't like one cause it's, it's, I'm talking about myself. So <laughs> I don't want to say that I don't like myself or my story, you know? Yeah, definitely. You know, that's what's going to be my next question is which one's your favorite? And you were just talking about Monster uh, and how it came out so quickly. Um, do you have like a, a process where you where you kind of like, you know, I've got to write this first or I've got to think of a melody first or, you know, do you have any kind of, uh, I guess, writing process like that? No, it just happens. Sometimes I'll have I'll have a chorus or something like that, uh, that particular song. I was just, I was, I was just playing a riff. I was just messing around with some chords and like, I don't know, just the inspiration that spark hit. And sometimes you got, once that hits, you got to capture it. Like while it's happening, man, you know, you know, like uh, make hay while the sun's shining, you know, like you just got to get her done in that moment. And that's what I did. Just wrote it down. And uh, fortunately, like I said, it, it came out really easy. All the words, it was like, uh, Sometimes it's hard. You're like, man, well, that doesn't rhyme with that. And this doesn't fit and blah, blah, blah. But that one just, like I said, just fell out of me. It was like I was singing a song that was already written. It was pretty cool. I went, like I said, I wish they all were like that. Cause that'd be real easy. I could probably make some money being a songwriter if, if, it, <laughs> if it always came that easy. Yeah. I mean, well, that sounds like you can from the stuff I've already heard. Oh, geez, all thanks. right. So, uh, yeah, you're welcome. Tell me, uh, you say that your band helps you a lot with the instrumental side of things. Um, did you have any other help on this album from uh, from different songwriters, or have you worked with other songwriters in the past that you really liked working with? I have not worked with any. I just started. Uh, I just started. There's a um, a girl in town named Liz Coulter and Paige Davis. Um, they I just started writing with them, and we came up with a really cool song. I don't know what I can, I, that's my first one. So I don't know if, if it's supposed to be like top secret. We're not supposed to talk about it. I have no idea what the, what the rules are. Um, because usually I just, uh, <laughs> your secret is safe with me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I usually, won't tell anybody. <laughs> usually it's just, uh, um, it's just me writing. And then the guys, um, so I have my, my drummer is, a uh, from a metal background. He's a, He's a really, he, he used to play in a, a big time touring metal band and then 
uh, my lead guitar player, he's like straight out of the seventies and eighties, just ripping solos. And, um, I have a bass player from a punk punk rock band. And so he's just got like massive amounts of energy. And just when you put it all together, you just get this like hodgepodge of just like, it's just a good time. Like, and I think that, uh, like just the one, the one that we were, that we played down in Missouri, it was actually a rock show. We just did, it was, uh, I don't know if you know, shaman's harvest. Um, and then a band called Troy, we're all Missouri boys, but, uh, we did a show and we we're, it was a rock show and we're obviously a little bit con- like I say we're the gateway drug because we're like a little bit too country for rock and roll, but a little <laughs> bit too rock and roll for country sometimes. So we're kind of like getting people to like whatever side, you know, um, but they the, the crowd wasn't sure like at first when we came out. But I think just the them having a good time, having fun just correlated. And by the end of it, we were all jamming and singing and 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 the, I could tell they really had a good time. So that was that was pretty cool. But I think that's what they bring when uh when we're when we're to the songwriting is the energy the um the different influences which allows us to kind of create the sound that we do that's awesome okay you gave me a lot to talk about right in that little segment there so uh you were talking (laughs) about the last one of the last shows you played tell me what's your favorite okay well and maybe you answered that a little bit with this um talking about the energy of your bandmates too what's one of your favorite things about performing live oh that's that's easy um it's the connection I think the moment that you're that you're it's it's why I do it more than anything. Um, the songs that I write are for me. That's that's what they are. They just it it, it is what it is. Um, it's therapeutic. It's just my release. It's how I deal with things. Now, when I can play those live, it's a different thing. It's 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 um, it's about uh, that connection with people. And my favorite thing is like that moment, whatever show it's at. It's us and the crowd. And then we when they're, when they're singing along, when we're we're all vibing. We're all one. That's our moment. That's us living life. And that, I think that's what life's about. You're that you're there. You're having a good time. And some of these people are standing next to people they'd never see in the, any, any other part of their life or ever again. But in that moment, we're all friends. We're all buddies. And that's our connection. And, and no one can take that moment from us. That's something that we can all carry with us, you know, from, from now till forever. So that right there, um, bringing joy and and peace to people for that, for that one little moment. That's, that's why we do it. Wow. I love that. That's a really cool sentiment just to know, like you said, like we're all friends in that one little second, in that one little segment of time, you know, that's, that's pretty deep. Wow. Look at you. Um, so what, I know that we can look on your, your website and kind of see where your scheduled shows are next, but um, is there any specific show that you're really looking forward to? I know there may be some like writer's rounds or stuff that, that's going on for you too, um, but is there something coming up on your schedule that like you cannot wait to play? There's a few things. <coughs> uh, I, just, I just scheduled for this Friday and Saturday. Uh, it's like a roof sit thing with the local radio station up here for, uh, for mental health awareness. Uh, and that's something I, you know, I really, I really, I really get behind anything with veterans or men- mental health awareness. Any any time that that music really helps people in other ways, uh, I'm all for it. I'm, uh, I can't wait to do shows like that and get out there and and reach people and kind of share my story, a little bit of my background, and um, hopefully make an impact on on someone and and hopefully you know share my inspirations and and my love of music with them and. And, and something good to come out of it. Anytime something like that's coming up, I, I get pretty jacked up about it. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Oh, my gosh. And where was that again? So this is in uh, Battle Creek, Michigan. Uh, there's a car, It's a car dealership. I still have to get some of the details. I don't know where I'm going. I just know what what's happening. Um, but then we're also doing a thing called Rock for Vets, which is a festival um, up in uh, Everett, Michigan on August 12th. So that'll be fun too, just getting out there with the vets and and singing songs and hopefully giving them a little peace because you know it, it, it sometimes it's hard for them coming home, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know. That's that sounds like a really special event for you. So that you'll have to keep me posted on how that goes. Yeah. Um, and also, <laughs> this is me just like a little personal tidbit. I've never been north, like further north. Uh, that's not true. I'm about to lie on this podcast because I've been in New York and I've been to other places, but I've never been to Michigan. Um, have you ever been to Michigan? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Played a bunch of shows. 
Um, I'm at my, my sister's house right now in Michigan. So. Stop. Oh my gosh. Cause I know you talked about being in Missouri and, and that's where you grew up and okay. See, and this is where my like geography brain does not connect. I'm sure that like, it's closer than what I realized. Um, <laughs> I'm from South Georgia. So like everything to me is off up North and, and I don't know anything other than that. So that's cool. That's so cool. Um, so what's your favorite show that you've performed at so far? Uh, is there anyone that like really stands out to you as something that uh, was special or anything that, you know, really got you into performing more shows live? Um, I, well, the, the one that got me into performing, I was in a, a rock band a long time ago and we, we did pretty well, fortunately enough. And, and we played a, a venue with about a thousand, 1500 people in it and, we played a song and I could, I could hear them singing the song so loud. It was, it was blowing through my in-ears and that right there is a feeling, man, when, when, when you write a song that means something to you and, and you got these people you never met in your life singing it back and it means something to them. There's no other feeling like that in the world. It's like, uh, you, you're, you're happy, you're excited and it's just, you're not alone, you know, cause they, they understand it. They feel it. They, you can that it goes back to that connection and um recently that happened again we just played a show up here in uh, battle creek at a place called the music factory and um i took my in ears out and and the crowd sang louder than i did and whew, that that just does something man it's like you almost have to like focus real hard because you just you, you don't want to tear up because it's just it means so much when when anybody presses play or or gives you the time of day it just you know just engages with what you're doing because you put your heart and soul in this and it's everything to you and when someone else sees that and, and appreciates it it means a lot so tell me what's one of those songs that like has the crowd singing the loudest well i would say uh light the night up for sure but uh monster that one just connects with people and uh help you know if people are battling something it, it definitely you could tell people that that relate to it. They, they, and, and that's one where I drop down to just an acoustic. It's just me and them. And, uh, I think it just gives it a different vibe. And we, we go from like turn it, cranking it to 11 to, Hey, let's talk about it for a minute. Let's just, you know, just sit in it. Just, just me, just me, my guitar and, and whoever's there, we're going to, we're going to sing a couple songs. And I think, I think they really connect. And, um, also if you've never been to Michigan, we got to get you up to one of these shows in august if you ain't got nothing going on you'll have to come up oh my gosh that sounds like so much fun I, I would love to come up in august because i will say i'm a i'm a music teacher um so i have to figure out that in my school schedule but that'd be so much fun you say august 12th is when you'll be performing there yeah but we have one in august 5th that is uh it's a rock day okay. um mm -hmm. but obviously we'll be there and then there's some alabama boys that are going to be there uh, and then Pop Evil, the rock band, is also going to be headlining, and it's it's called Rib Fest in Kalamazoo, oh, and there's going to be ribs and mac and cheese yeah. and some good barbecue. Oh, I'm sure down in perfect. Georgia you can appreciate some good barbecue. <laughs> oh, and did oh, you know yeah, that, that sounds great? Uh, are do you like peaches? Being from Georgia, uh, absolutely, I do. Yeah, for sure. Did you know? I was, I was at a, I played an acoustic show for some friends and they were like, Hey, you want a bush beer? And I was like, yeah, I'll take a bush beer. And, uh, it was a peach, like a bush peach. I didn't even know they made that, ah. but it was pretty good. We shotgunned a few of them. It went down easy. <laughs> you just changed my life though. Cause I've had like a lot of bush apple, a lot. Okay. And now I'm just going to go find some bush peach. Cause like, I didn't even know that was a thing. How, how did I not know as a Georgia peach? Oh my gosh. It. Well, thank you for enlightening me yeah. on that. <laughs> I'll have to find it. Yeah. That makes me really happy. Now we talked about live music. We, we talked about some of your release stuff. Um, let's talk a little bit more about like you as a music fan. Uh, what do you, when you're not listening to yourself, right? Cause obviously artists listen to themselves. Right. Um, what, what's, uh, what's on your playlist? What are you listening to right now? Whew, my playlist is all over. Uh, I try, I don't really listen to myself that much cause we play it so often. I, I get enough of it. Um, I usually, if I'm doing stuff, listening to myself, it's, it's something that I'm working on something new, uh, just trying to make it better as good as it can be. And, um, but on my playlist, I think, uh, 
I really like uh, I the Zach Bryan live at Red Rocks. Man, I've been jamming that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I've also uh, I've been into a lot of uh, Bad Omens. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that it just some some different rock stuff that's coming out in this moment. I got that on there, and uh, Shine Down always is on there a little bit. Uh, just all over the map all over the map i would i wish garth brooks was on I, I i i do itunes for everything and he for whatever reason he doesn't let his music be on there I but know. i wish he did because uh <laughs> i love that double live i could listen to that every day oh yes oh my gosh i haven't even listened to that album in such a long time but yeah i used to burn it out <laughs> i think i have the um the cd copy of it which is wild yeah that's exactly <laughs> what i did i i stole it from my yeah daddy. <laughs> So I stole yeah. it right out of his Tacoma. So I'm with you. Yeah, I stole mine from my daddy. And, and then. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. Um, <laughs> there you go. Okay. So thinking like in the future, is there an artist or are there several artists? You can name a few. Um, who you would like to tour with or you would like to go, um, you know play festivals with or anything like that? Like who is on your list of those artists that you really want to, uh, to play with? I think, um, I think Hardy is obviously number one for me, uh, being that he's kind of breaking the ground as far as uh, rock and country and it being even more acceptable. Uh, he's got songs on Octane and he's got songs on the highway. And um, I just love the way he goes about himself. He's just like, basically, are we can we, he's basically i'm not gonna cuss we'll say he's just like f the world i'm gonna be me and y'all can accept <laughs> it or not um and that's kind of what we do too and then jelly roll same thing. yeah jelly roll too wait before we talk about jelly roll you, did you go see that that uh that private show was it you that saw the the one that was sponsored by bush before cma fest started yeah i was there yep yep tell, tell me about it because i'm mad that i missed it yep that was me tell me more <laughs> oh man oh so a buddy of mine um worked he works at Nash News got some tickets and he was like hey um thought of you do you want to go see Hardy and I was like uh yeah I do <laughs> with some expletives in there and uh we we got there and this venue is I don't know like the size of a living room it's not big so it's maybe a hundred people in there and uh they come out and he just from like for an hour, it was me and this other guy, his name's Jackson from, uh, and we just, I, I just met him. We became instant best friends, kind of like stepbrothers. We were like, did we just become best friends? <laughs> and, uh, yep. And we just sang every word and being like 20 feet from him. It was like insane. It was just so much fun. It was, God, man, I don't, I don't know if, it's like when you see an artist that normally plays stadiums and, and something that small, you try to like enjoy the moment as much as possible and just understand like, this is not normal. <laughs> this is not <laughs> this. You just try to enjoy it. And I was like, as I was leaving, I was like, this is the greatest <laughs> night of my life. This is so amazing. You know, like it was just, it was just it was That's crazy. Awesome. It was so much I, fun. I saw Hardy back in, and he smashed the yeah no i saw the the video of uh of him smashing the guitar like that was that's wild oh my gosh i saw him back in march um for my birthday and i've that was i think the third time i've seen yeah. him now just because he's one of my favorites too and i don't know man he just gets better and better and like hearing um redneck song was <laughs> live was was oh that was great it's pretty cool um okay so hardy jelly roll who put on like such a cool little surprise cameo at, at CMA Fest in Nissan Stadium. Like I didn't even know he was going to be there. So that was pretty dope. Um, yeah. Who else? I think if uh, on the rock side of the fence, I think, I think Shinedown, Blackstone, Cherry, my boys in Shaman's Harvest, man, if y'all, if y'all listen to this, I'd love to do something with you. They, they're just some really cool guys. We were hanging out, out with them on uh, Friday and, um, I would just, I would love to do something with them, but uh, I think, I think it would be really cool if, if it was like a shine down Brantley Gilbert and us. That'd be cool. I'd be down with that. I feel or like Hardy, that would go really well. Or Hardy Jelly Roll and yeah, 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 Hardy Jelly sure. Roll, and then we could open for them. We'd be happy to. That sounds like an awesome lineup. Oh my gosh, I'd be there. Give me, set, just let yeah. me know when, and I'll buy tickets. I'll be there for sure. 
<laughs> Heck yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I think that it's time that we probably wrap this up. Um, but before we do, is there anything else? Uh, I know that we promoted a couple of your shows that you have coming up. Is there anything, any inside information that you have about any, any music coming out or, or anything else? I know you mm -hmm. just released your album, but any, any secrets you want to reveal? <laughs> We, uh, we are working on a few things. Um, we're working on the next album already and, um, nothing set in stone yet. So I don't want to jinx anything, but, uh, we're probably, we're going to shoot for another album next April and have it, uh, we're shooting for 16 songs, uh, eight, eight in rock, eight in country. And we'll, uh, we'll see where we go and fall tour, getting ready to announce some more dates and, uh, do some stuff and, It'll be fun. That's so awesome. And I'm so glad that you took the time to to sit down and, and talk with me all the way from Michigan today because, yeah, I'm a big fan. So thanks so much for, uh, for hanging out. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, so Derek Randall uh, at Derek Randall Music. Make sure you check him out. And you heard it here with Lee and Coda Country. We'll see you later.